Okay, so um, a number of months ago, one of my Talmidim in Eretz this year asked me a question on that uh, that week's Parsha. That was Parsha Tzav. Um, so the question itself was one that I had never thought of. And in and of itself is very interesting. But even more interesting was uh, the approach that he took to uh, he took to trying to to figure out the answer to to the question um, before he even asked uh, asked me the question. Um, and it was through this approach that we entered into like the classic shakla vitaria that's typical of so many of so many yeshivas. Ah, Rashi deals with your question. I say. Ah, uh, no, but Rashi doesn't. There's the, there's this issue with Rashi. He doesn't deal, seem to deal with every aspect. He he kind of in response. Okay, so this led into a whole discussion that ultimately uh, resulted in us coming to a, an answer to his original question. But also, we left with many other questions. Um, we learned well past the end of night seder, Baruch Hashem, and uh, we left with the. Uh, I I told him that I would uh, believe that dare try to look more into the topic. And it was very interesting, and so I immediately, uh, because I knew that if I didn't that right away, I would, uh, I would maybe not look into it. So I, I looked into it, and it resulted in this into this shear. Um, so I just thought it would be very fitting to uh, help promote this wonderful yeshiva by showing the 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 fruits of their labors. A former Talmud of the yeshiva, myself, um, now a Rebbe in the yeshiva, Baruch Hashem. And a current Talmud who come together uh, to learn the beautiful Torah of Akadosh Baruch Hu, um, and creating uh, and creating something something new or something old. We're just uh, we're, we're 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 telling over something uh, that that hasn't that we hadn't thought of before. So now, what is this topic? Let's 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 talk about it. So the question that he asked me was: I'm just going to share my screen, um, my Marmakomos, so that I can. Everyone can see what I'm talking about. Let's see, share. Okay. So, did Hashem really speak with Aaron? So, the question that he asked was, the Pasuk says in Parshas Tzav, Vaydaber Hashem El Moshe Lemor, Tzav Es Aaron Vesban of Lemor. Why does Hashem feel the need in the to, to write in the Torah that it was Tzav Es Aaron when normally, right, or not normally, but many other times in the Torah, the Torah tells us some formulation, Vaydaber Hashem El Aaron Lemor, as it says in Parsha Shmini and Source 2. Um, it says in Parsha Shmini, Vayyomer Hashem El Aaron Lemor. Other times it says Vayyomer Hashem El Aaron. Other times it says Vayyomer Hashem El Moshe the El Aaron. Other times it says Vayyomer Hashem El Moshe the El Aaron. Right? Some formulation of Vayyomer Vayyomer El Moshe El Aaron uh, El Aaron himself. Right. So why did the Torah take a pause um, from that from that formulation and say Tzav is Aaron? Uh, that was his question. Um, so my immediate thought was. Well, hold on. Are we going to, can we assume that when the Torah says that Hashem spoke to Aaron, does that mean literally like the same way that he spoke to Moshe? But in source three, if we see there, don't we know, don't we know that the Torah tells us explicitly, actually after, after um, uh, Miriam spoke uh, Lashon Hara about Moshe and his, and his wife, the, the Torah tells us that Hashem called Mo Moshe, Miriam and Aaron to the Olamoid. And it says, um, if you look in the in the bolded part, right? All right, it's only going to be in a dream that I'm going to show you your nevuah, right? Below chen avdi Moshe, but that's not the same. That's not true about your servant, Mo, but my servant Moshe, pe el pe adaber bo, right? I'm going to I show him literally. It's it's face to face, mouth to mouth. We speak. Um, it's it is a different sort of nivua. Also elsewhere in in the Sefer Bar Medvar, the Torah tells us Vayidaber Hashem Vayidaber Moshe Al Roshei Matos. This is source four. Livnei Yisrael Leimor Zeh Hadavar Shir Siva Hashem. Rashi explains that Moshe Nisnabe Moshe received nivua with Bichol Amar Hashem. Right, he received and also the Neviim. It says it says Neviim Nisnabe Bichol Amar. 
Right? So everyone who receives, all Nevi'im receive, not everyone, but but, but Nevi'im receive um, the Nevu'ah of Ko'amar. Right? And then also Moshe received, Moshe Falehem, Moshe Nishinis Nabeh Veloshun Zehadavar. Right, so the Maharal in source six in the Gur Arye explains, um, essentially, I, I'll just say it outside quickly. He says that Moshe received literally Zehadavar. This is exactly what Hashem says. This is word for word what Hashem said. But all the other Nevi'im received a, it's or the, as the Gemara says, right? it was a, it was a, um, uh, shalom, uh, uh, sh- sorry, sh- it was it was she'ena mi'ira, right? That was a a looking glass that's not so clear, by right? Meaning they would receive a vision from Hashem, and they would it would be they would say over their interpretation of the vision, whereas Moshe received the direct word of Hashem. So, how could it be that Moshe that that Hashem says that the Torah says by Hashem el Aaron? When the only person that received such a debor, such a speech with Hashem, was was um, Moshe, right? That's question number one, right? That was, and so that was, sorry, that was question number two. Question number one was the question of why is it say tzav? As Aaron, when the other times it says Vayidaber Hashem el Aaron, and then the question, question number two is, did Aaron really speak to to, uh, to, um, to Hashem? Did Hashem really speak to Aaron? But as I said in my introduction. Um, I mentioned that ah, but Rashi deals with the problem. That was actually a real thing that I said at the time because in source number source number eight, right, the Torah at the beginning of, of Parshas Vayikra says Vayikra al Moshe Vayidaber Hashem Elav, and Rashi comments he quotes a sifra. The, the sifra is in source number nine, um, but Rashi says that there were thirteen times. In the Torah, that the words that some sort of for, sort of formulation of Vayda of Elav is said, and these are coming to be Mimait Aaron. Right, they are coming to exclude Aaron from the Dibor of um, from these di- Dibros. Right, it says Shlosha Asar Dibros Nemru Torah. This is source eight, but Lemoshe uh, Ula Aaron that said to Moshe and to Aaron Uchenegdam Nemru Yud Gimel Miutin, and there are thirteen times where it says. That, that where the Torah comes and excludes, right? She excludes Aaron, right? Ella Moshe Aaron. Rather, it says it was only said to Moshe to tell to Aaron, right? So it seems it seems like Rashi deals deals with our problem that really even though the Torah says Vayidaber Hashem El Aaron, really it was not said to Aaron; it was said to Moshe. Now, of course, there are two. Problems that um, were pointed out by by this Talmud. Number one, if you we Baruch Hashem have access to the internet, and that makes looking uh, searching for these sorts of uh, this this topic. If you want to just find out how many times does the Torah say some sort of formulation of Vayda Ber Hashem El Aaron, Vayomer Hashem El Aaron, or or with Moshe or without Moshe, whatever, all one needs to do is simply search on Ala Torah or Bar Ilan or or um, or Safaria. So we have. So I looked it up, and there are, I believe, if I, I believe there are twenty twenty three times that it's uh, that the Torah has this for, some formulation of Vayomer Hashem El Aron, Vayomer Hashem El Moshe Ve'El Aron, Vayda Ber Hashem El Aron, Vayda Ber Hashem El Moshe Ve'El Aron. Right. So there are twenty three times. How could it be? Right. So this seems to the Sifra does not seem to deal with all of them. It says only thirteen. Right. The other problem that we're not to deal with is is the mechelta in source number ten. Now I'm not not all not all um, uh, midrashim have to go hand in hand, but um, it seems a little strange that the Torah says, and this is by Parshas Hachodesh in um, in Parshas Bo, Vayomer Hashem El Moshe Vi'El Aaron Be'eretz Mitzrayim Lemor. Right. So. The Torah, right? Hashem said to Moshe and to Aaron. So the the Michelta, the Michelta says, "Hold on. You would think that it was actually said to Moshe and to Aaron. No, it was of course, of course, not said to Moshe and Aaron. Rather, it says it was it was really to say that I'm going to uh, starting over here. Right? Rather, they were only they were put in the same 
in a grouping together. But, but the Torah said, the, 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 the Medrash explains that the Torah didn't actually say it to Aaron. It said it to only Moshe. And why did it not say it to him? Um, it was only said, um, it was only put there, uh, I guess, really it should have been said only to Aaron. But it was said to Moshe. Also, it was Moshe was included in order to uh, uh, to give kavod to address kavod to Moshe. So Nim says this is the part that, that the, the part that is the, the problem. Right, that Aaron is excluded from all the dibros in the Torah. That it says that Hashem spoke to, to Aaron. Right, except for three places where it is impossible. Three places that we just saw in the, in the Sifra, right, in source number nine, that there are 13 times that come to exclude the 13 times. It doesn't, I don't see anything about exceptions. Why is it say, why does the Torah say that there are three? Why does the Michel to say, rather, the Medrash in source number 10 say that there are three exceptions? That is source, that is question number number three. So again, the three questions so far are why is it Sav and Sav is Saharon, but other times it says Vaida Berashem El Aaron, like in Parsha Shmini. Number two, number two, why does the Torah, um, why does the Major say that uh, in the Sifra that there are only 13 times when there are there are actually 23? Right? There are only 13 times that Hashem that, that we only need to exclude 13 times that Hashem spoke to Moshe. Sorry, the Hashem spoke to Aaron when there are actually twenty three, and and number and question number three is there seems to be a machlokas between the Sifra and the, and the, and the Mechelta, um that the Sifra says that there seems to only say that there are thirteen without any exceptions, and the Mechelta says that there are three exceptions. Right, so those are three questions, and now we have a now we have um, ah the other the question number four is an extension of the Mechelta is that how could there be three exceptions? Didn't we have a rule above that we said that only Moshe said, it was only Moshe that spoke pe'el pe to Hashem? That only Moshe received zehadavar. What does it mean in the Mechelta that there are three exceptions? That seems to go against our rule that we established earlier. That's our fourth question. Okay. Now I have a, fi- a fifth and final question, and, and then we will come we will be, come into, into a beautiful answer. But question number five is, the Torah says in Parsha Shmini, after Nadav and Aviyu's deaths, Vayomer Moshe al Aaron, who has shared Diber Hashem leimor bekrovai akadish v'al pnei kol ha'am am ekavid, right? That, that Moshe explains to him cryptically. It's not um, why why they Nadav and Aviyu were supposed to die. That that really that the measure says that they were. Re- they were really greater than even you and I, says Moshe to Aaron. Um, okay, I, the leaving leaving the, the the topic of Nadav and Aviyu aside, which is a, a whole different uh, uh, ball game. The Torah says Vayidom Aaron, right? That that Aaron was silent. Rashi explains that. Okay, what does it exactly mean with that he was silent? Doesn't he doesn't explain, but he says Vikibel Schar al Shesikaso, right? That Aram received Schar, he received reward for for being for um being silent at this time, right? And what was the schar that he received? Shenis Yahid Imo Hadibor, right? Shana Marlo Levad Parsha Shesuyayan. He received he that the schar that he received was that Hashem, Hashem. Was the was this Yachid Imo Hadib, or the Hashem spoke to Aaron himself alone, right? As it says, we as we pointed out in, in earlier on, in part, this is source number two, um, Vaidaber Hashem El Aaron Lemor Yain Veshichar Al Teish, right? It says, the Torah says that uh, immediately following the dozen of you that that they the Kohanim are not allowed to drink, um, drink, um, and then do the Avoda, drink alcohol, so. Because of the 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 fact that he was silent, right? The, the fact that Aaron was silent, it says uh, says Rashi. He's actually quoting a Gemara in Zvachim that that the Dibor was was given to Aaron alone. The Mefarshim point out that seems to be directly 
against what we said at the beginning of Parshas Vayikra. Rashi quoted the Sifra that said that there are thirteen times that that there are thirteen times that the Torah says that that Hashem spoke to Aaron. And then there are 13 times that tells us that it was actually only said to Moshe and Aaron. Now, how do I know? How do I know that the time here of, of Yahim Meshech Al Tesh in Parsha Shmini is referring to, is, refer, is, being, is being referred to within the context of that Sifra? Right? How do I know that one of the times that one of the, the 13 times? Um, times that Hashem spoke to Aaron is is being excluded is that is the is in Parsha Shmini. So that's just a basic basic math equation. If one counted the number of times that the Torah says Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe Viel Aaron, that comes out to eleven. And then if one counts the number of times it says Vayidaber Hashem El Aaron, it that is two. And then, and then, on the other side. The um the number of times it says Vayomer Hashem El Aaron is three, and Vayomer Hashem El Moshe El Aaron is seven. So, so it seems to be that if the only way we're going to get to thirteen is by eleven and two, so that tells me that the Sifra is clearly dealing with. The, all the times that it says Vaidaber Hashem, and then it includes El Moshevi El Aaron and Vaidaber Hashem El Aaron. Again, so so the question of Ra, on Rashi is he seems to be he seems to be what we say have a stira. He seems to contradict himself because in Parshas Vayikra he says that there are thirteen times that are being ex- excluded that Hashem didn't, didn't actually speak to Aaron, but here. In Parshas Shmini, he seems to say that the schar that Aaron received for being for his silence is that he will that he will receive a direct speech, a direct debor from Hashem. That is question number five. There seems to be a contradiction in Rashi. Okay, now we have to answer these questions, and we have okay, we have enough time. So <clears throat> First, how could it be? How could it be that that this? How do we resolve this Rashi? Right, there's, there seems to be a big problem in Rashi. Uh, that's actually let's let's start not there. Let's start with with here in source number fourteen. Right, we see that the Torah told us at the um, at the in the lit. Uh, later part of Parshas Korach, Vayomer Hashem El Aaron. Right, so Rashi explains Lemoshe Amar Sheyomer La Aaron La Hazhiro Al Takanas Yisrael Shelo Yikansu LeMikdash. Right, that the Jewish people that Moshe was told, supposed to needed to tell Aaron that the Jewish people were not allowed to enter into the Mikdash. Okay, so this seems consistent with many of the other things that we've said. Um, that every time that the Torah says, when the Torah says Hashem spoke to Aaron. It was said to Moshe, explains the the Maharal in source number 15. First, he explains it's a technical issue. Why does um why does Rashi feel the need to tell us that Hashem spoke to Moshe to tell Aaron? The Torah, the Pazuk says, by Yomer Hashem El Aaron. Right? Why does the why do we did Rashi feel forced to say it was said to actually Moshe? So he says it's a technical issue because the Jewish people came and complained to Moshe because they were dying. There was a plague. There was a Magifa that was being exacted against the Jewish people after the after the rebellion of Korach. And so they came and complained to Moshe. And then the Torah says Hashem responded to Aaron. That would be very strange. So the Maharal says that's why Rashi felt the need to explain that it was said to Moshe, who was the person who was who was the who the complaint was being um was being um given to um and, and then that he was going to tell Aaron who was going to be able to to um exact the the uh the takana exact uh, to to give the fix to 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 help them re, um get out of the the plague but the second half of the morale is the part which helps us start to answer our question number one he says 
We pointed out that there are, there are different times where there, the Torah says, Vayidaber Hashem el Moshe Aaron, and there are times that the Torah says, Vayilmer Hashem el Moshe Aaron, or the other, or El Aaron alone. But, the, but there is a difference between, says the Maharal, Vayomer and Vayidaber. Vayomer, says the Maharal, I'll say it outside just to save time. Vayomer is something that can is a one, it, it is a one liner. It is a if I wanted to tell someone something that it was like I'm I'm worried that if I if it's too complicated that they're not going to be able to, to send give it over as a shaliach, right? I'm going to then only say something in shorthand. So here's the example. Think about the game of telephone, right? Even the game of telephone, when I say I say one word to someone, the person next to me, by the time we get to the end of the line, right? So what, what I said is not even recognizable compared to what the person at the end is saying. They're saying something totally, totally different. So in order to avoid that, I only want to have one little, one person, one shaliach, and it's going to be said very, very, very succinctly and clearly. That is Vayomer. Vayomer is a very uncomplicated issue. And it's always said with a shaliach. That's why the Torah says, by Hagar, right? The Torah says that Vayomer Hashem la. The Hashem didn't actually speak to Hagar. Hashem sent a shaliach to speak to Hagar. That's why the Torah says, Vayomer Hashem la. So that's Vayomer. But Vaydaber, says the Maharal, that's something that's complicated. That is a that is a whole complicated topic. So every time the Torah says, Vaydaber Hashem, right, that is really, that, that has to be only have been said to Moshe. So when the Torah says, Vaydaber Hashem el Aaron, Right, that's why the, the Maharal points out that later on in Parshas Korach it says Vaydaber Hashem El Aaron. Right, so rather it must be um, it must be that Hashem said it to says it, Rashi uh, says the Maharal Le Moshe Diber Shiyomer La Aaron. It was really had to have been said to Moshe to tell to Aaron. Now, how does that deal with our question? Um, that's going to deal with question number numbers, basically number three. Four, and four, right? That what is the difference between the Michelta and the Sifri? Explains the Malbim. Now that we know there's a difference between Vayomer and Vaydaber, we and as we explained before, that there are 13 times it says Vaydaber in the Torah, and there are 10 times that the Torah says Vayomer, right? That In the Sifra, the Torah says, Vaydaber Hashem, right? Vaydaber Elah, right? That all the times it says Vaydaber Hashem, really it was not said to Aaron at all. It was always said to Moshe to tell to Aaron. That has to be what the Sifra means, right? As we explained before, the only thing that, that the only the, it has to be dealing with the Dibros. But the Mechelta also is, it's not, it's, there's no Machlokas, right? The Mechelta says all the times that Hash, the, the Torah says, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe ve'el Aaron, it is coming to say, really, it was only said to Moshe to tell to Aaron, except for three times. Well, what are the three times? The three times are, the Torah says, Vayomer Hashem el Aaron three times. So the Mechelta, says the Malbim, is dealing with all the times that the Torah says Vayomer, right? Uh, to recap, uh, because it's, it, it gets complicated here. We said, we had the question of how could it be that there's, the, the Sifra says that there are no exceptions, that all the times that the Torah says Hashem spoke to Aaron, that Hashem really said to Moshe to tell Aaron. But the Mechilta said, no, there are three times. Says the Malbim, he explains, and the, and uh, that we know, well says the Maharal. That there, he explains that there is difference between Vayidaber and Vayomer, and the Maharal and the Malbim jumps on this and says, "I'll tell you even further that the number of times it says Vayidaber is thirteen. That is ex that it works in tandem with the the uh, the Sifra, and so there are when it says Vayidaber, there are no exceptions, but when there when it comes to 
Vayomer, that is exactly what the Mechelta means. There's no Machlokas, because the Mechelta said that there are three exceptions to the rule, that the, every single time the Torah says, Vayomer Hashem al Moshe al Aaron, it means Hashem, Moshe said, Hashem said to Moshe to tell Aaron, except for three times where it said, Vayomer Hashem el Aaron. And I doesn't that seem to go against the rule that we had in the beginning, that how, can I, how could the Mechelta say that there are three times that Hashem actually spoke to Moshe? Excuse me, the Hashem spoke to Aaron. Well, Vayomer Hashem al Aaron is a, a very easy, it's a very easy language. And it's not, it's, there's no, uh, it's not the, the intricate Dibor of Vayda Bear. Aaron himself was a Navi, right? There's no, the, the, who, there's no need to worry about the fact that Aaron received Nebua, right? So when the Torah says Vayomer Hashem al Aaron, Right, it means, yeah, Hashem said to Aaron through a nevuah the way all other nevim received nevuah. So now we have seem to have dealt with many of our questions. Right, number one, the mechelta. There are yes, there are more than thirteen times in the sifra, but that's exactly what the mechelta is dealing with. And those three exceptions are all the times it says Vayomer Hashem El Aaron. Right, Aaron alone, and that that does not seem to be at odds with the rule that we established at the beginning that Hashem only speaks pal pal to Moshe because Aaron himself was a navi, and therefore he could receive all the nevuah the same way that all received nevuah the same way everyone received nevuah, and with the lotion of Vayomer, then it was in a very it was a very um, it was not the intricate intricate me- uh, manner of Dibor that Vayda Ber Hashem is. But, of course, we are going to have to deal with the fact that Rashi seems to have, have a machlokis with himself. But Rashi said that, that the Hashem spoke directly to, to Aaron, um, right, in, in uh, Parsha Shmini, but in the beginning of Parsha Vayikra, he told us that that was the one of the times that Hashem did not speak to Aaron, actually, but I, he actually spoke to Moshe to tell Aaron. So the Maharal, this is a very Maharal heavy shear. The Maharal explains, um, explains that in this is in source seventeen. I will send out the the, the Makoros if anyone wants wants to uh, wants. I can email them to to, to you. Um, but I'm going to say everything outside because we're running out of time. The Maharal explains that. What the Torah, what, what Rashi means, and what the Gemara means, is that when the Torah says "Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe El Vayidaber Hashem El Aharon Leimor Yaim Veshekar Al Tesh in Parsha Shmini," what the Torah, what the what the Gemara means is that really, what is it? Should it's Yachin Adibor Mo? That really, the the Torah should have said "Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe the El Aharon Leimor," but. But because of the because of the fact that he that Aaron was silent, Vayidom Aaron, the Torah had a showed great great um, kavod for Aaron and made it that it looked like Hashem actually did speak to Aaron alone and not to Moshe. Comes the comes the medrash and explains even then it was really said to Moshe. It was not actually said to Aaron, but the Torah wanted to show cover to Aaron by making it look like it was said to Aaron, but it wasn't actually said to Aaron. Now, it doesn't necessarily feel amazing because we want to show cover to Aaron. Aaron, is a, Aaron was, one of, was one of the greatest Tadikim to ever live. He was, the Gemara tells us he was uh, Oiv Shalom, Rodev Shalom. Everyone loved him. But it certainly works within the, the rules that the Torah does give us. But the Torah get to, the Torah tells us that Hashem told Aaron himself, right when he was when he was scolding Aaron and 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 um, Miriam for the for the lashon hara, that Moshe is different. I only speak to Moshe directly alone. So now that now that seems that now this explanation of the Maral seems to work in, work with that. That really it was not actually said to Aaron. It was said to Moshe, but because of of Vayidom Aaron, he was given the schar that made it look like he was only saying it to him. Now. We have to. I want to answer the, the um this uh the question at the beginning because um 
We're not, I'm not going to have time to get to everything, but I would like, to, I think I can offer a nice answer. So this is, uh, this does not seem to, this is totally outside of the, the whole, the rest of the year that Hashem actually speaks to Aaron. But the Torah tells us, again, I'll rephrase the question, say the question one more time. Why does the Torah say Tzav es Aaron when other times the Torah tells us Hashem spoke Vayidaber Hashem El Aaron? Even like it, the Torah could have said Vayidaber Hashem El, El, El Aaron, and it could have been said to Moshe um, to tell Aaron. But okay, it could have said that. Why does the Torah need to say Tzav es Aaron? Right? Why does why does the Torah feel the need to not give the, the that that kavod of, of of saying Hashem spoke to Aaron and um and say Tzav? So I thought the answer could be like this. After Chid HaEgel, there was a, Rashi explains to us in Parsha Shmini that there was a Gzera, there was a, there was, uh, Hashem was very angry at Aaron and he wanted to, he was going to exact pun, um, a punishment from Aaron. What was that punishment? Rashi explains in Parsha Shmini, he says that he was actually going to, Cut off his entire his entire line. He was going to, uh, the, the, the it was going to be a uh, the deaths of his children, right? All four of Aaron's children were going to die. Um, now that's a whole discussion about I loyim su avos al banim uvanim loyim su al avos. That's a, right, that children dying for their father's sin seems to be a very a very uh, seem there's that's a whole topic. But um, but the Torah tells us that. The Torah tells us that that after Nadav and Aviyu died, right? That, that Moshe said, "Vayidaber Moshe el Moshe el el el." This is source nineteen. Vayidaber Moshe el Aaron el Elazar el Elisamar banav hanu sarim. That his remaining sons that they were left over from death. That what happened? Hashem was going to kill all four children of Ar of Aaron. He was going to kill all four of them. But um, Moshe davened on behalf of his children, on behalf of Aaron, and was able to save two. Right, they were left. They were they were remained remaining from death. That's why Elazar and Isamar were saved, and only Nadav and Aviu died. Immediately after the deaths of Nadav and Aviu, the Torah says, "Vayidaber Hashem El Moshe Biel Aaron Lemor." Immediately after, immediately after the Torah says, um, tells us that um, that. Aaron's children died, the Torah gives this kavod to Aaron. I thought that Pshat could be like this. Why does the Torah say Tzavis Aaron? Because Hashem was very angry at Aaron after the Chena Egel. Hashem didn't want to give Aaron the proper kavod. Or not the proper kavod. Hashem didn't want to give Aaron the kavod at all. Hashem, it was, it was a, he didn't want to say by Daber Hashem El Aaron. But immediately after after Aaron's children died, the punishment of Aaron for Chela Egel was done. Immediately after, um, after um, the the punishment for Chela Egel was done, the Torah says, "Vaydaber Hashem el Aaron lemor." Why? Because you could have thought that, well, he was involved in the Chela Egel. Was he really such a tzaddik? Was he really so so amazing? That you would that you would give him that the Hashem really loves him so much, says Hashem, Vaidaber Hashem El Aaron Lemor. Do not even think for a second that he's not tzaddik. He's such a tzaddik that I'm going to speak to. I'm going to make it seem as if I'm going to speak to him directly. I'm going to say Vaidaber Hashem El Aaron Lemor. Don't think. Okay, I was mad at him. I'm. I'm I have. I am a Melech of Rachamim and Din. I have. I have both. I'm a merciful king, and I and I, but I'm also a. I also have to exact. Um, I have, am also a fair and just king. As soon as the din, the 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 punishment was done, now he shows Aaron is still. I I still he's still my beloved. Uh, my beloved Cohen. I still love him, and I will not show you just how much. But Yidaber Hashem El Aaron Lemor. Um, everyone uh, should have a wonderful, wonderful day, and um, please, please. Uh, Find uh, if you could any if you can just uh, show any support to the yeshiva, it would be so so amazing. Um, I I have a t so much a to, a to the yeshiva.